Hi, today I'm going to talk about two problems that I often see when I try to model uh, thermoplastics or, or thermoplastic elastomers or rubber materials uh, using a viscoplastic material model. Can you see what the two problems are? Well, the first problem is related to the Young's modulus not depending on the strain rate. In real experimental materials, sometimes the Young's modulus is relatively strongly dependent on the strain rate. And that's something that's surprisingly hard to do using a viscoplastic material model. And the second issue is related to large strain response. At large strains, these types of viscoplastic material models tend to have stress strain curves at different strain rates that kind of converge together into one curve at really large strains, almost independent of the strain rate. And that's not always what happens in real uh, tests. So today I'm going to show you how we can fix these problems um, in a relatively quick and easy way. So let's start with the problem number one first, a strain rate dependent Young's modulus. So this is a power flow model. I use a two network representation here. The rate of viscoplastic flow is proportional to the shear stress that drives the relaxation and flow raised to a power exponent m. That is what gives us this kind of response. If m is relatively large, here m is 8, we'll see that there is no viscoplastic flow until some value of stress, and then the flow goes pretty quick. Uh, to make it more strain rate dependent, a very quick and easy way that I've been knowing and using uh, for a number of years now is to use this m factor strain dependent. So if I can make it go from an initial value of mi, in this case 2, to a final value of mf of 8, and I'll let it evolve over some characteristic strain, in this case, it's 0 0.05, I can get the modulus here that changes with strain rate without too much effort. And then I can get the same large strain response later on. So it's a very quick fix. This is now available in the poly mod version of the T and V mod, which is one of the models that I recommend the most. So I'm pretty excited to mention this, because now you can use this uh, without too much effort in your own uh, work. And the second problem I want to talk about is, is something related to flow cessation, or how the stress strain curves become more or less independent of strain rate at really large strains. And um, the approach I will take here is similar to what's done by Dupay and Boyce in the paper they wrote some time ago. So this is a paper from the research group at MIT that I worked with back in the day. And um, the idea that they came up with was to say that, well, from experiments we know, uh, was their argument, we know that at large deformations, the amount of molecular relaxation in these polymers actually goes down at large, uh, large deformations, right? The relaxation goes down. There's less of a flow. It's a cessation of the molecular flow in that case. And how would we model that? Well, their argument was we're going to use them the H-chain, Aruda Boy's H-chain model that was developed uh, for hyperelastic material models. But you can also use sort of the, the thinking in this case here. So what they did proposed was, well, let's look at the orientation between one of these H-chain molecules that goes from the center of this representative unit element to the corners. And we look at the angle between that molecule and the three principal directions. So there are three angles. And then we find the angle of those three that is the largest in magnitude. And I'm going to call that alpha max. And then I'm going to define another variable called alpha to be pi over 2 minus alpha max, sort of a complementary angle. And uh, what they then said, well, the rate of viscoelastic flow is proportional to stress raised to power, like in the power model. But then we have a prefactor that is sort of like this, alpha divided by a critical value, and alpha zero is the initial value of alpha. So as alpha initially is alpha zero, this prefactor becomes one. So that's easy. Um, what they show, though, through experiments is that alpha C value here is independent of temperature and strain rate for most polymers. So that's really cool. That's why this, is, this model is, is tempting to use, because of that nice feature. Um, when I thought of this, I decided to change this equation a little bit, make it what I think a little bit more useful. So here's the equation that I selected. Again, this is the rate of viscoplastic flow. 
is proportional to a shear stress raised to a power m. And of course, I can make m to be dependent on the strain magnitude, just like I mentioned earlier. And then the flow cessation factor, fv, is given by this equation. So um, what I'm saying is that if a is equal to zero, the two parameters a and b, if a is zero, this, this whole flow cessation goes away. This becomes one and it doesn't matter. And if a is one, we get exactly the, the mall idea from the pay and boy. So we can scale the magnitude of this, this uh, reduction in flow or relaxation. So that's kind of cool. And the B parameter, B here, is, is just the material parameters that is between zero and one. Beta is, is a quantity that is related to the molecular orientation, just like defined here. You can show at really small deformations that the factor F we becomes pretty much one, and at large, this becomes very small, just like what we want. We want to reduce the viscoplastic flow rate and the relaxation at the large strains. So see, let's take a look at this. So this is example one. The figure to the left shows um, the prediction um, of a traditional power flow model. So here we have everything like we usually do. This is engineering stress strain just to show how it looks when you have many different strain rates. And this is generated using M calibration from our company. We'll see a pretty weird behavior. Okay, so the strain rate dependence of the yield stress is strong. And then it sort of converges towards something like this here. And um, that's just what comes out of the model. And that's not always what happens. In fact, this is pretty unusual to see something like that. So when I turn on this flow cessation a factor, I, in this case, I set A equal to 0 0.95 and, and B equal to 0 0.1. I get them to dis distribute a little bit different here. I get a little bit more flat curves and they're a little bit uh, wider apart here. Uh, if I then instead make A equal to 1 and keep the B value, I get this response. I can clearly, using this flow cessation parameters A and B, control how these curves react to strain rate at large strains. And it's a powerful tool for predictions then. You can fit the response of your um, material model to experimental data just like you typically would like to do. How about the B parameter? The B parameter, as I mentioned, controls uh, really at what strain the molecular response becomes so stretched out that the relaxation and flow doesn't happen so much. So, so B is the smaller B is, the more it can stretch before that happens. So here the blue lines have a B of 0 0.3. You see that over here somewhere. We're starting to reduce the influence of uh, viscoplastic relaxation, and it starts to stiffen up. And this indeed happens for certain thermoplastic materials, particularly at elevated temperature. So this is a powerful thing. You can control this when it happens using this factor, B. So let's summarize the whole idea here, start to finish. Here's the initial power flow model. The two problems I talked about, the modulus wasn't so good always. We can fix that using this M parameter, make it strain dependent. It's an easy fix. And secondly, we turn on the, the flow cessation, and we can make this curve behave slightly different at larger strains. So these two factors together allows you to significantly improve the accuracy in many cases of your material model. So that's really the purpose of this. These changes are now available in the latest version of M calibration and polyumod. Take a look at that if you're interested. And if you have any questions, you can always ask them below.